Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, before we proceed further, we will briefly look at what we did last time and then go to new aspects of the reactions that we were discussing. So last time towards the uh, uh, end, we looked at many aspects of uh, the SAMP and RAMP based uh, uh, CC bond formation as you can see that this is uh, a SAMP based uh, hydrazone and uh, when we carry out a CC bond formation uh, next to this uh, hydrazone moiety then of course we induce asymmetry. Likewise we of course we have done the reactions with the RAMP. Now once we have got this particular product in which a CC bond has been uh, formed then of course we uh, did several reactions uh, to release the auxiliary. First one was of course the hydrolysis to go to the ketone. The second one was uh, reduction of this particular uh, hydrazone moiety uh, to release the corresponding amine. The third one was to convert this into a thioketal and the fourth one was uh, the case in which R1 was hydrogen then of course we through an oxide bond formation here we uh, got the corresponding nitrile. In all these cases, we had this carbon, carbon bond formed in an asymmetric fashion <clears throat> and which of course was high in ancho selective uh, products. Now uh, we also looked at the uh, camphor sultum based auxiliary as introduced by Oppolzer and saw the Diels order reactions and Michael reactions in highly enantio selective fashions. Now towards the end we uh, looked at the aldol reactions and directed aldol reactions under basic or acidic conditions. Uh, we saw that if the aldol reactions are not directed then of course we keep on getting uh, different mixtures of the products. Uh, but if we have a directed aldol reaction then of course we get only specifically uh, these types of uh, products in which uh, uh, the two enantiomers of the syn product and two enantiomers of the anti products are formed and if the reaction is highly diacetyl selective then of course we would get one as the major over the other one. So uh, that is how uh, we looked at the reactions of the directed aldol reactions. Now we will go further for uh, today's lecture. First of all uh, these uh, syn and uh, uh, anti products these are the syn, uh, syn and uh, uh, anti products uh, we need to sort of uh, define them and as you can see here it is a syn product uh, which in which the two hydroxy groups are uh, oriented in the same direction and the same is the case here. And uh, first of all what you have to draw is a main carbon chain in, in a extended in a zigzag form. So this is the R C C C R prime. This is the main chain of the um, which is written in zigzag form and in such a case when uh, the two substituents at C2 and C3 like this is C2 and this is C3. If suppose these substituents are oriented in or disposed in the same direction like as you can see here they are in exposed in beta direction or alpha direction here. So that means these are called syn products. When uh, the uh, C2 and C3 groups are oriented or disposed uh, in different directions like here this is an alpha and this is beta and here is alpha and this is uh, sorry this is uh, beta uh, it is not uh, correct this is uh, this is beta. <coughs> this is beta and this is alpha and this is alpha and this is beta. So uh, they are uh, opposite uh, to each other uh, therefore these are called anti products. Uh, but some people call it as erythro uh, although not many people accept it but some people call such uh, arrangements as erythro and this uh, uh, arrangement as 3U. 
It has also been found that uh, good diastereo selection uh, is uh, noticed using lithium and boron enolates which have uh, been widely used. The stereochemical course of reaction depends on uh, thermodynamic and kinetic conditions. Different kinds of thermodynamic and kinetic conditions are, are employed. It also depends on the geometry of the enolates. And uh, for example, this is a Z enolate and this is an E enolate. So the R1 group is opposite, R1 group is opposite to the enolate here and therefore this is an E enolate whereas R1 group is in the same direction as enolate and therefore this is Z configuration. And it is noticed that the Z enolates lead to syn products and E enolates give to uh, anti products. It also depends upon uh, the size of the R group here. For example, if the size is of R2 is large, then there is a better selectivity or higher selectivity that is observed. So that means uh, everything boils down to the fact that uh, how can we ensure that uh, Z enolate is formed or E enolate form is formed depending on what we want to do it. So selectivity in terms of uh, formation of E and Z enolate is therefore important. Now for example, if we take uh, a, a compound like this in which there is a, if there is a tertiary butyl group here and ethyl group is here and uh, if the reaction is carried out uh, in THF uh, at low temperatures like minus 70 degrees using a base like LDA lithium diisopropyl amide then uh, the enolization would occur from this position here obviously and we get the enolate like this which is a Z enolate. Now when this is reacted with benzaldehyde for example the uh, product that is formed is syn product which is more than 98 percent syn and uh, the uh, group that you can see here is bulky R2 group. So this is what we were saying that the R2 group should be bulky. So here as you can see that this bulky tertiary butyl group has been put and therefore the selectivity turns out to be very high. Now if we take uh, in contrast we take this uh, diethyl ketone where the tertiary butyl group is now replaced by the ethyl group then we of course will get this as Z enolate. However, this Z enolate gives 70 percent of syn and uh, 30 percent of the anti product. So that means now since the uh, bulkiness of the R2 group is reduced, uh, so this is the uh, R2 group and here it was tertiary butyl. So it is ethyl versus tertiary butyl group as R2. So clearly the, the size of the R2 group um, makes a lot of difference in terms of uh, selectivity of syn versus trans. So uh, in general it has been found that reactions with E enolates are uh, less stereoselective than with Z enolates. Now on the other hand reactions conducted under equilibrating conditions give mainly 2-3 anti aldols irrespective of the geometry of the enolate. That means that uh, the thermodynamically uh, 2,3 uh, anti aldols are, are formed if the reaction is allowed to continue or the um, al reactions are conducted under equilibrating conditions. So eventually it forms thermodynamically more stable anti aldol product. But if the reactions are not performed under an, uh, equilibrating conditions then of course the Z enolates give better uh, selectivity than the E enolates and then we will see how does that happen. Now here uh, allyl condensation uh, that you can see is uh, generally uh, uh, reversible because unless and until it is worked up, the reaction is worked up with acidic conditions or basic conditions depending on what kind of enolates is, are used and uh, the reactions are basically reversible. And syn anti equilibrium is noticed if the allyl is allowed to stand for a long time in ether solution. So now why is it that the Z enolate gives 
uh, thin product more and E enolate gives uh, a kind of mixture that you can see. Suppose you allow this uh, aldehyde to react with Z enolate like this. Lead. So, we can uh, make this kind of uh, 6 member transition state where we have this, this particular enolate part uh, shown in here for example and aldehyde can orient itself in such a way that the R group is in equatorial orientation and the carbonyl group is uh, now having a chelation with the metal. So, this particular OM is oriented here so that the boron or the lithium or whatever the metal is can have a intercalation with this and this 6 member transition state which is a cyclic uh, chair form can be anticipated. So, if you can see now here that uh, the R group is equatorial and this R1 is axial of course and this R2 is hanging here below. In such a situation when the aldol condensation takes place then we can anticipate that this uh, particular uh, uh, geometry is formed for, for example this uh, the CC bond when it when it forms in here then what we have is a hydroxy group pointing it upward and the R1 group is also pointing upward therefore these two are beta and therefore this is 2, 3 syn product. Now this is uh, most likely uh, the product uh, between the two of them. In the, in the second uh, possibility we can orient uh, the aldehyde in such a way that R group now becomes axial. So now we have two axials here the R as, uh, as well as R1. Here the R1 being axial does not matter much because we do not have any substituents on this particular um, uh, so, uh, position and therefore there is no 1, 3 diaxial interaction. On the other hand when this becomes axial here then what we have is on 1, 2 and 3 now we have a 1, 3 diaxial interaction and therefore we, we can expect that such a, a steric hindrance would uh, create a problem. At the same time the, the ligands attached to the metal will also have an interaction with the R group that is here or even R2. And uh, as you can now see that uh, the, uh, the R1 group is pointing up uh, as uh, in the previous case and but now if we turn around this R group so that it orients in this particular fashion then of course the OH will come down and therefore this is anti orientation of the aldol product. Now this is what we call it as least likely and that is because of the tremendous steric hindrance that the R and R2 groups and also the ligands on the metal are basically experiencing. Therefore, this is least likely and this is most likely. Now we turn towards the um, uh, E enolate and as you can see the same type of orientation that we can uh, 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 show and but in here now since the um, E enolate is there therefore R1 group is uh, opposite to the uh, OM and therefore it is orienting in a equatorial position. Now if we put the aldehyde in which uh, we have the uh, R group here in the uh, actual orientation of course there has to be a double bond O and uh, in such a situation when the reaction occurs as you can see R1 is pointing downward and if we orient R up then OH will come down and therefore this is 2, 3 sin. Now uh, here there is a possibility of uh, the same sort of interactions as they are here in this case and, and therefore it is also not a very uh, choice uh, a product for choice. Uh, and uh, when we convert the um, other uh, orientations where the uh, RCHO group is such that the R group is uh, equatorially oriented. Now we have R as well as R1 group both are equatorially oriented and then now if you look at the product that is formed 
in this case if R group is already in the same direction as up and this particular part is also here. Therefore, uh, as such you can see that the OH is pointing upward and the R1 group is pointing downward and therefore they are also anti to each other. So, um, now uh, this is uh, 2, 3 sin and this is 2, 3 anti and therefore what we expect that uh, in this case since the uh, steric hindrance is not uh, there therefore we uh, expect this product to form in a larger amount. To some extent this product is formed and a larger amount of this particular product is formed. And therefore, we, uh, we say that the Z enolate uh, is uh, very good uh, uh, enolate to lead to the 2, 3 sin product and uh, in this case we get somewhat a mixture of the products because in this case this is less but still likely. Why do we say still likely because R1 group is in equatorial position whereas in this case the R1 group is in the actual position. Therefore, between the two of them this one and this one this is little bit likely to be formed more but this is less likely to be formed. Therefore, uh, in this uh, Z enolate case when there are two possibilities clearly the 2, 3 sin product is most likely and therefore the selectivity turns out to be high. In the case of uh, E enolate because the R1 groups are equatorially oriented therefore uh, both the possibilities to some extent one large one less is there and therefore selectivity becomes somewhat less. Now uh, the CC bond formation via boron and uh, silicon enolates uh, have been uh, very uh, much used in the lol chemistry and we will look at some of these things uh, in little bit more detail. Uh, excellent diastereo selection has been observed using vinyl oxyboranes. As we uh, checked uh, before that we can make the enolates uh, the, the way we want it. Now if we take a diethyl ketone for example something like this, something like this then uh, if we use uh, uh, dibutyl uh, boron triflate and in the presence of this hunic base that is diisopropyl ethyl amine in, at minus 78 degrees then this is the uh, enolate that is boron enolate that is formed which is a Z enolate which is 19 more than 99 is to 1 ratio of the Z and E enolate. And when this reacts with benzaldehyde then of course you get uh, uh, syn product, syn aldol uh, which is more than 97 percent in terms of its ratio. Now uh, why is it that uh, Z enolates are formed in most cases? One of the product, one of the reasons for this is that if we look take the, the, the kind of Newman projection of the transition state then as you can see it here that this uh, particular methyl group uh, and this ethyl group are away from each other uh, and whereas if we look at this below here then the methyl group and the ethyl group are towards the, the same side. So obviously there is a tremendous amount of steric hindrance here and that uh, allows uh, the, the methyl group to be away from the, uh, from the ethyl group and it prefers to remain in this direction and when that uh, particular orientation of the methyl group uh, uh, is uh, preferred then when the deprotonation occurs of course you get the Z enolate as the major product. Here you will get the E enolate but <coughs> E enolates are generally not easily obtained and they have to be obtained under carefully chosen conditions. Lot of work has been done uh, in, uh, in this uh, area and especially by David Evans and uh, also to some extent by H.C. Brown in this case. Now we will see what exactly happens when we uh, change the uh, uh, substituents or we change the um, bases or we change the you know, kind of uh, size of the bases or the size of the substituents on the boron or even the leaving group. So uh, as you can see here the same thing I have written here now except that we have dibutyl uh, this uh, 
substituents on here and we are uh, we have put here x uh, x as a leaving group so it could be say for example a triplet so what has been observed by david evans uh, david evans d a evans uh, that that everything being equal everything being equal more bulky base like dipea that is diisopropyl ethylamine which is what is used in many cases and that allows anti deprotonation now anti deprotonation means this is the anti complex in which the methyl group and the ethyl group are away from each other this is the here the complexation is taking place with the uh, boron triflate now what has been found that if we take a bulky base such as dipea so you have isopropyl isopropyl and you have n and of course ethyl so this is what is unix base or dipea diisopropyl ethylamine this is a large base and therefore when this reacts with the with a boron triflate say for example this bu2 then it forms a kind of a complex like this uh, which is an equilibrium uh, in equilibrium with the free form that means uh, you have a i p r i p r 2 uh, n and ethyl and of course we have the boron here b u 2 or triflate so they, this actually the uh, it's an equilibrium with each other that means it it attaches to the boron and uh, it dissociates from it. So, in that situation when it comes in contact with the carbonyl group then uh, the when boron attaches to it and boron then tries to be away from the methyl group here that is where it is shown as a in the beta orientation that means it is coming towards us uh, and avoiding the interaction with the methyl group. So, it is a, the methyl has a choice either it remains in this direction or it goes into this direction. If it goes into this direction then of course, we have the steady hindrance with the ethyl group. But if suppose it remains in the same position here as a methyl group then the since there is an equilibrium between the two of them the boron gets attached to the oxygen but from away from the side of the methyl group and now the large uh, base which is a Hunix base goes and deprotonates the hydrogen from there which then leads to the formation of the Z enolate. And uh, if, uh, if the, um, the uh, methyl group goes into the other direction then of course, uh, you, we would expect the E enolate to form. But then uh, that does not happen in the case when we have uh, large uh, bases where, like, such as uh, Hunix base or uh, diisopropyl ethylamine because they uh, are in equilibrium and therefore, the boron can easily interact with the oxygen and keep it itself away from the methyl group. But if, it, if the base is relatively small then such as triethylamine less bulky then there is a possibility of uh, the deprotonation from the syn complex here. The, in that situation what happens if methyl group goes on to the left hand side it has an interaction with the ethyl group that is fine. But at that time the boron actually with the less bulky groups uh, less bulky bases uh, form irreversible complex with the uh, boron. So, you have uh, say triethylamine and it forms irreversible say like this you have minus and plus. So, this does not dissociate readily and therefore, it remains attached to the nitrogen and since the base is required for the deprotonation. So, therefore, this particular uh, orientation that means oxygen boron bond is going back side. If it goes back side then it will have a steady hindrance with the methyl group therefore, methyl group goes away from it and it prefers to stay here. Uh, and in this situation in a relatively small base that is diethylamine then picks up the proton from here and the in <coughs> deprotonation leads to E enolate formation. So, you have a choice uh, where the steady hindrance between this methyl and ethyl versus the, the methyl versus this group 
So obviously this group that is very large therefore methyl group tends to prefer to go away from it and uh, has some interaction with the ethyl group but then this is how E enolates are formed. And since this is a situation where it is not a very, um, uh, very easy situation and therefore one gets the E enolate uh, as the product but with not a high selectivity. That is the reason why Z enolate is formed with high selectivity when uh, the large base is used uh, in the um, deprotonation. Now uh, this is how it is summarized. So we will uh, stop it here uh, today and uh, we will take the uh, reactions of these for uh, condensation and see how these are uh, leading to the formation of the syn and the uh, uh, anti products in uh, aldol reactions. So you please uh, study whatever I have told and I have also given you some references you can check more in detail and uh, till then bye and see you in the next class. Mm -hmm.